Good afternoon, everyone. Dr. Kazoo back again, wishing you a happy weather day again. I gotta admit, when this is the wildest winter I've ever seen in Pennsylvania, myself living here in western Pennsylvania, central Pennsylvania, being out here with a, like a sweatshirt and a jacket on in the winter, we usually have like layers of sweaters and coats and everything else. It's a pretty wild winter. A lot of it is, though, you have a jet stream that has been coming down in the western and cutting across into the northern states, it really your colder air and your moisture air in the conversion zones like we told you. And that's what basically been happening a good bit of the winter. And the way this magnetics and everything's been set up, this year's been like a little bit different as you notice, because over here in the east coast we really haven't had any storms right up the coast like we always get every winter that cause our nor'easters that we have because the jet streams, the way the magnetics, induction, and everything in place, as you can see, has was kept it going this year a lot different than last year. And that's like we told you last time because you had the North Pole switching the degrees west that we told you and the South Pole switching caused a lot of stuff. And also a lot of stuff's been going on up around the sun too. We're doing some investigating, seeing there's like a lot of the small explosions and different things going up. It's been happening this winter just like last summer it did. And that's playing a lot of role in the atmosphere right now with the weather and everything goes on. People say, no, no, when something goes up around the sun, it wouldn't affect us. But yes, it does, because we're connected into the sun. As you can see, every day you wake up with a yellow thing in the sky, you see it's real bright. That's the sun, which everybody knows. That has a lot to do with the weather, believe it or not. Plus, everything else down here, this boiling water effect, everything we told you in the past has a lot to do with it, too. That's still going south, and that's tied into the warm, moist flow is still going south. And like what you just seen like in Pennsylvania this past weekend here in the last couple of days we had high winds in other, other states here. There's very powerful jet stream that was cold coming across and it was very powerful pushing up and you had like it caused everything, all your high winds and everything. And that's what's you know, there's very strong systems. It's very strong in the south, it's very strong in the north here. And a lot of things to look at too, like we talked to the elevations out here in the, in the western states, 168,000 feet elevation in the mountains, like we did, like, and a lot of things go on. And we talked before in the past here about Mount Davis, the volcano there, Mount Helen, these volcanoes out here like that. And stuff just comes out, the lava and everything comes out of these volcanoes, does go into the atmosphere with everything else that's going on up there. And it, it has a lot to do with the weather, okay, and the storms coming across, the conversion points and everything like that. Moving across here. Yeah, there's a lot going on this year. And we have a Yellowstone Park, there's a corridor uh, that they, you never hear too much about. That's 50, 60 miles, miles wide. You know, we don't want any of this stuff really erupting. It's very dangerous for all of us, really. We got Mount Rushmore. A lot of the stuff's happening around this stuff right now. It's causing a lot of it. You know, the magnetic induction is a different part of the the earth now and what it was last winter. A lot of things are changing of the mag magnetics of the of planet Earth into the universe right there. And you still had your, we told you, here's something very important that we did tell you in the past here that actually did happen was we actually had the Siberian connection into Alaska this year with the Canadian vortex opening up and the magnet, all the magnetics coming down. And, that, and they kept, the way the the jet stream ran, everything ran, it kept a, a good bit of this colder air up north. Only like it came down into this country in spurts, you know, just not like it did every other winter. Which is which is a lot different, you know. It uh, That's why when Alaska got, I guess, a couple times this year, they got like 170 degrees below zero. Even for those people who are very used to living up there, that's quite very dangerous to even think about living in, you know. In the, getting 15 feet of snow and then 18 feet on top. I've never really paid too much attention to their weather up there, but I believe that's, I haven't really in the past heard of them really getting 15 feet and then 18, another 18 feet on top of it right after that, making them, you know, there's an awful lot of snow to, to endure, even up in a place like that when the people are used to living in it, though. And what's going to affect it? It's, it's going to affect us this spring and summer. Hurricane season can be very wicked when it comes into hurricane season later on in the year. It's not going to give a quota this year on how many hurricanes do I think is going to hit the United States. Even if it's one, it could be the way, one of the worst you've ever seen. If it moves up the coast the right way, it can wipe out everything, you know. And your tornadoes this year, okay, 
your tornadoes this year are going to be dangerous like last year. You had a, what we had about over 300. We had a good many of them last year. And even if you don't have as many this year, you could have close to last year. But if you didn't have as many this year, they're even going to be more could be even be more severe than what they were. Uh, this, uh, you know, in the in the past, and you're going to see places up in here, New York, Pennsylvania. You might see Chicago. A lot of places that have usually don't see tornadoes. You might start seeing them now in the coming spring. And I'm even going stretching out a little bit for this summer. I even really believe now Pennsylvania, New York, and some places up here might see a week or two like over close to 100 degree weather this summer. Because this, like you had last in Texas last summer, it sweltered in for a couple of weeks or more. And uh, you know, I'm looking for droughts this summer because, believe it or not, we a lot of snow that we usually get, especially on the East Coast and you get the West Coast. So, and you usually hear like a lot of flooding this time of year and in the spring. And you may not have it this year. And I'm really believing now it's going to mess up the water table along the way here. So we're going to have problems with the water, the water this year and some places the drought. And a lot of things are just going on this year. Uh, the spring, spring could be very dangerous this year if come the weather, you know. And don't be surprised if you don't see a springtime uh, snowstorm too here, you know, just because this is a very weird winter. Places that have even record high temperatures this winter that usually don't get warm weather in the winter, you know, you know, stuff like that. And there's a lot going on. We have our oil fields. These here are our oil fields down here, so we can watch a lot of stuff here in our Florida Keys, some stuff in that nature there, and uh, Texas here. They, it's amazing this this winter they had all that flooding after the drought that they had, you know, this past summer and the heat down there. But was it you know was it enough to straighten out their water table there? But we're gonna take a little break now. I really think I I don't know I still got some. Something's gonna brew here. This something's this is a very unstable, very unstable atmosphere here. We got five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, we're back again from a couple minutes here again, folks. Uh, Dr. Gazoo again. What we, we need to do is our boiling water out here in the Atlantic is going up to the north, cutting across the St. Lawrence Seaway here up through Pennsylvania, New York. And it's hitting into the these ice glaciers that are moving towards Canada, and they're moving towards Canada now about five miles a day. So we're really getting closer into Canada now. So there's going to be a lot of this coming up here, a lot of meltdown. There's a lot of things are going on here, and we still got talk a little bit about the mountain ranges like we did in the past here. We don't want to keep repeating ourselves all the time, but about the storms coming in, 168,000 feet can change the storms with the jet streams. And a very powerful conversion point here. It can also depend on what way if a storm goes straight across, goes down to the south. Some of them go into the south. And, and usually the ones in the past that went down to the south from going turning right up the east coast, but they haven't done it this year. You know, it's like different than either going out to sea, because that's the way everything is going this year. You know, there's different things in that nature there. It was and we still have, like we said, that's coming up here. We still Got a connection there, so we're gonna take a little break again. Well, what I was told in 2006, they were keeping it very quiet. They didn't want people to know. So figured nobody would believe it anyway. You know, there's nothing we can do. You know, just you can't. You gotta be very quiet. People don't care. People don't. Care. Okay, I look at all that stuff. I'm knocking down, stopping from saving this planet. Look what I've been doing since 2005. Does one person give a shit? No. So what? So then we'll find out at the end.